A tough ending for the Dolphins' regular season. It hurts, it should. Awaiting to play against the defending Super Bowl champions. A final countdown for two college football teams. To be the best, you gotta, you gotta beat the best, so you know, that's our mindset and we're ready to have at it. Competing for the national championship title. A tornado swept through a South Florida neighborhood, damaging everything on its path and majority of the country under winter weather alerts. Over here, they didn't throw any salt yet, so the roads are really bad. Following the first snowstorm of the year, these stories and more coming up on News Break. Hello, South Florida. I'm Anthony Cruz. I'm Valentina Gaspari. Today is Monday, January 8th, 2024. Live from the Lee Kaplan School of Journalism and Media in North Miami, this is Kaplan News. The Bills played home records and took away Miami's home field advantage in the first two playoff rounds. This morning, Bills Mafia completes its takeover of South Florida as Buffalo stole the division title from the Dolphins. The game was a tale of two halves. The Finns were in control of the first half as their depleted defensive unit still managed to force three turnovers from Josh Allen and stop running back Ty Johnson on a goal line drive. Running back Devon Achan and Tyreek Hill also got on the board. The script would flip though after Bills Deontay Hardy scored on a 95 yard punt return in the fourth and Allen connected to tight end Dawson Knox for a clutch touchdown. The Finns offense would go ice cold though and could not respond in crunch time. The final score was Buffalo 21, Dolphins 14. Coach Mike McDaniel was has more on how the Finns look to brush off two straight disappointing losses before they face the Chiefs in the wild card round. Yeah, I, I can't console or or fix it um, with the team. It hurts. It should. Uh, we we lost a game that um, we think we're capable of winning. Hats off to the Buffalo Bills for um, coming uh, coming in here and and winning the game. Um, but yeah, we'll focus uh, immediately on Kansas City because that's, uh, that's the only way that you can really get through something like this. The team looks to keep its head up as they prepare to go into Kansas City next Saturday. This morning, the University of Michigan football team just touched down in Texas as they prepare to face the University of Washington for the national championship. Michigan coach Jim Harbaugh, now a part of a small group of coaches to make the Super Bowl and the college football playoff finals, is confident ahead of the matchup. The showdown takes place tonight at 7.30 p.m. on ESPN. Scary sights in Fort Lauderdale this morning as parts of the city are still recovering from a tornado that touched down during the weekend. A few people on X captured the devastation as power lines and trees were reportedly knocked down with debris flying in the downtown area. The tornado is said to have made contact with some structures and even marine vessels before reaching the ocean, but luckily no one was harmed. In the tri-state, while some are enjoying playing with snowballs and the beautiful white scenery, conditions are growing dangerous on the roads. WCBS Alessia Reed has more on the story. Snow plows have been busy cleaning roadways, sidewalks and parking lots. The accumulation has proved dangerous for vehicles not equipped for the downpour. We have cars that are going off the road. We had a car going to a tree on 287. We got cars that are sliding that shouldn't be on the road uh, based on the conditions. So it's time for people to uh, get off the roads, go home, and uh, wait this out. The DeSantos family came out to do some shopping and had no idea what they were getting into. Over here, they didn't throw any salt yet. So the roads are really bad. Instead of getting behind the wheel, some opted to go for a stroll. The Morristown Green, resembling a winter wonderland. All the lights kind of reflecting off the snow. It feels like a real Christmas scene, finally. Oh, it feels wonderful. It's perfect for a snowball fight or building a snowman. Mm, I don't know what we should name him. Uh, Rocky. Yeah, we'll name him Rocky. This is the first snowfall for the Castillo family, who are making the best of the moment. When I live in Honduras, like there's no snow there, so I'm really happy. That was WCBS Alessia Reed reporting. New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy advised don't go out unless you need to go out and stay off the roads. This morning, the FDA has approved Florida's request to import less costly medications from Canada. In 2020, President Donald Trump finalized a plan that allowed states to submit import proposals, which President Biden would later follow up by ordering the FBA, FDA to collaborate with states on the plans. Florida was the first state to submit a proposal back in November of 2020. 
Many obstacles are in Florida's way before it can officially begin importations. However, state officials claim that the program could save taxpayers up to $150 million per year. Some of the casualties of the Israel-Hamas war are historic sites in Gaza. CNN's Nada Bashir shows us what has been lost. They were cultural treasures and hubs of the community in Gaza. Now they lay in ruins. These pictures show the St. Porphyrius Church, one of the oldest in the world, before Israel's assault began three months ago. This is what it looks like now, after an Israeli airstrike in October. We are here 2,000 years, and we are not going to live. We'll stay here. The church's father, Habib Silas, says 17 people died in the strike on the compound where people were taking shelter. Israel says it was, quote, collateral damage and wasn't the intended target. But it's not the only historic site to have been destroyed. The Grand Mosque in Gaza has history that is said to date back to the time of the Philistines. Today, all that remains standing is the minaret. Its library, with historic manuscripts, largely lost. And it's not just places of worship. This bathhouse, said to have been built in the 14th century, has been in the hands of the same family for generations. Whenever this war ends and reconstruction begins, one thing is for sure. So much of Gaza's history now lies in rubble. Neda Bashir, CNN, in Beirut. This morning, the chances of a partial government shutdown on January 19th lessen as Speaker of the House Mike Johnson announces that the spending cap for the fiscal year will be $1.59 trillion. $886 billion will be allocated to defense spending and $704 billion to non-defense, including cuts to IRS and COVID-era funding. Ongoing conflicts on foreign and border security and the investigation into the impeachment of into the impeachment case of President Joe Biden were the front running headlines of a historically unproductive year for the House. Both parties will look to work together to prevent a full shutdown on February 2nd in a crucial election year. An early morning launch from Florida today aimed at a lunar landing. That's still ahead and so is the story. Next thing I knew I was approaching 90 and I said, gotta get to 100. It started as a way to honor the memory of a friend, but 1,300 miles later, it's become even more. Newsweek will be back in just two minutes. Last week, Brandon met a girl on a dating app. One day after work, he finally found the courage to ask her out. No answer. He started to panic. Was he being too pushy? Maybe it was too... Hey, sorry I didn't respond. I was driving. I would love to go on a date. How does tonight sound? Brandon tried to play it cool, but inside he knew. A girl so smart, so responsible. She must be a keeper. How do you know when you've made the right decision? It's the feeling you get in your gut. The one that tells you what's right or wrong. It's the one that says, sure, I can have a drink. Or the feeling that says, okay, I've been drinking. Now what? It's the voice inside you that says, I'm buzzed. Better leave the car when it's time to go. Plan ahead. Catch a sober ride. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Every day, every day, millions of people are connecting. And even though we're overcoming obstacles, watching each other's backs, and banding together, we should still make an effort. We should still make an effort to get to know each other on a deeper level. Father, cosplayer, mentor, actor. 
It's time we take a step forward. It's time we take a step forward, come together, and discover how accepting our differences can make, make us stronger. A woman running her way to competing a mission 11 years in the making. The woman who lives in Rhode Island has now competed in 100 half marathons. She shares her running journey and was sparked it with reporter Sam Reed. Dangling down the stairs of 61 year old Solange Morset's Barrington home, her pride and joy is evident all over. I've got all my medals hanging in the house. You know, it's kind of a reminder of, of the accomplishment and the, and the fun I've shared with people. In 2011, having watched the end of a half marathon, running was really never a thing for her. After learning her dear friend Bob Cabral had passed away from cancer, she decided to run a half marathon in his honor. I thought, I did it, I did it. I, I ran a half marathon. I never planned to run another one. That is exactly what did not happen. I have a bulletin board upstairs with every single race bib that I've ever run. Running half marathons consisting of 13.1 miles all around Rhode Island and southern New England. Most of them I've stayed in southern New England, but then when I got towards the end and I knew I was going to get to 100, I decided to travel for the last 10. The next thing I knew, I was approaching 90 and I said, got to get to 100. In November, Solange achieved her dream. She crossed the Golden Gate Bridge during her 100th half marathon. I was wearing a 100 tiara. And while her goal is complete, at the age of 61, with no official plans of slowing down. She says only time will tell. My friends all say, you're not done running half marathons. And I keep saying, yes, I am. I'm retired. But I have to be honest, it's our, the, the desire is already sneaking back in to run another one. That was Sam Reed reporting. Her races have taken her to Florida, California, Texas, and Wyoming. The U.S. moon landing is launching for the first time in decades. Peregrine is now on its way to the moon after launching earlier today. It's planning to touch down on February 23rd. During its time there, it will gather data for future moon missions using equipment. It carries photographs, novels, and a piece of Mount Everest and human remains. You're watching Newsbreak, and we're coming right back. Do you have a Pell Grant? Yes. You do know you can get a free tablet, right? Did you say free? Yeah, free. It's simple. And the application is done in the store. I could really use a tablet. Go get, go get one! <sighs> Another satisfied customer. Stop by Panthetech in the Graham Center at FIU MMC today to speak with one of our associates to get your free tablet. Type 2 diabetes can have a big impact on your life. But how can it be prevented? Well, the first step is knowing if you have something called prediabetes. Take the one-minute risk test today at doihaveprediabetes.org. And unfortunately, that's all the time we have for news break. I'm Valentina Gaspari. And I'm Anthony Cruz. Get more news anytime at kaplannews.fiu.edu.